Vicente de Santa is one of the most loathsome and immoral antagonists, not only in Red Dead Redemption, but I would also argue in the entire Red Dead franchise. Repulsive, merciless, cruel and sadistic, Vicente de Santa is a classic sociopath. De Santa completely lacks both empathy and remorse. He is a sociopathic liar, demonstrates hostile and aggressive tendencies, has no regards for the safety of others, including fellow Mexican soldiers and officers, maintains superficial relationships, and is very manipulative. Vicente de Santa is so odious that he does not have any redeeming qualities. De Santa is a shameless sycophant of his commanding officer and Nuevo Preso governor, Colonel Augustin Allende, who he greatly admires. De Santa is also very opportunistic, and his main ambition is the accumulation of power. De Santa craves power above everything else. He regularly abuses it and seems to enjoy this, in particular the violent suppression of both the state rebellion and terrorizing innocent civilians. De Santa also has no qualms when it comes to kidnapping teenage girls and young women in order to satisfy Colonel Allende. In fact, De Santa only seems to care about himself and Allende. Reviled by both the Nuevo Preso rebels and the citizens of the state, Captain Vicente De Santa is truly one of the most despicable and evil characters in the Red Dead Redemption franchise. De Santa truly enjoys terrorizing the state rebellion and ensuring overwhelming dread in those he victimizes. De Santa only looks out for himself. While he attempts to eliminate fellow Mexican officers, he views as rivals by sending them on overwhelming or even suicidal missions. There isn't much known about Captain Vicente de Santa's backstory and history upon John Marston's arrival at Escalera in Mexico in his pursuit of Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela, which ultimately led him south of the border. What we do know is that de Santa was a captain in the Mexican army who thought very little of his fellow soldiers and officers only looking out for himself and his own ambitions. When John Marston arrives in Escalera, Nuevo Preso, at the governor's mansion, he is approached and accosted by Captain Vicente de Santa of the Mexican army. Accompanied by two armed soldiers, de Santa attempts to intimidate John by acting hostile with a very threatening tone. However, he then reveals that they were joking and laugh at John's expense, who clearly was not amused. De Santa then sits down with John and is much more welcoming and even jovial. John eventually informs De Santa of the purpose for his visit, that he's seeking to apprehend outlaws Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela and De Santa suggests that they are likely hiding in the hills with killers and thieves posing as rebels who are led by Abraham Reyes. With De Santa adding that his troops are attempting to lure Reyes into a trap. De Santa invites John to join them in their attempt to apprehend Reyes. During their conversation John can't help but notice how DeSanta and the young waiter, who has been serving tequila, are eyeing one another and exchanging 
peculiar glances. This occurs again throughout the story in Mexico as John assists DeSanta and the Mexican army in his pursuit of Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela. John and DeSanta then depart Escalera as DeSanta asks John to follow him. While traveling to their destination, DeSanta immediately and from out of nowhere starts defending Colonel Allende, refuting that he is a tyrant and that he is not maintaining an oppressive and authoritarian regime. John, meanwhile, counters DeSanta's notion that John wasn't expecting a warm welcome from the Mexican army by pointing out that since he's arrived in Mexico, he's not only been shot at, but has heard nothing but how awful Colonel Allende and his regime is. DeSanta becomes even more defensive to the point of being agitated. He immediately asks or demands if John has ever met Allende, if he knows him, and DeSanta then insists that John is just repeating the lies he heard. DeSanta insists that Allende is a good and strong man who carries the weight of a million problems on his shoulders. John responds to DeSanta's defense of Allende by asking if he's supposed to pity him, to which DeSanta lashes out at John, insisting that Americans like to talk badly about other people because it makes them feel better about themselves and that maybe they should look in the mirror, which is ironically what DeSanta immediately started doing, being defensive about Allende's regime in the state of Nuevo Prezo, while Allende's detractors, the citizens of the state, are liars. John is then quite clever to respond that DeSanta is the one who brought it up and keeps talking about it. And John isn't in Mexico to pass judgment on the state government, that he has enough problems with the United States government. DeSanta then says that this isn't America, that Mexico is riddled with poverty, and therefore kindness must take a different form. He says, what is better, to put your arm around a hungry man, or to beat him until he grows some food to eat? John responds that DeSanta needs to answer that himself, but it's really an unsatisfactory answer, as DeSanta was doing nothing but attempting to justify the reality and brutality of Allende's regime. DeSanta continues to justify the behavior and actions of Allende's regime by further denigrating the citizens of the state by remarking, that is the problem with the people here. They spend too much time dreaming about imaginary futures. So, according to DeSanta, the citizens should just accept their meager living conditions, the harassment of the soldiers, and keep quiet. At this point, John is unaware, but DeSanta is already growing suspicious of him. John, referring to his own situation with Bill and Javier, which he tried explaining to DeSanta, says, I know I can't change the past, but I'm sure going to do something about the future. To which DeSanta replies, Whatever helps you sleep at night, amigo. My country is full of American criminals, mostly in the service of the rebel pigs. Mexico is an easy place for a man to lose himself, whether he wants to get lost or not. While DeSanta initially seems to be referring to Bill Williamson, that his country is full of American criminals and they're helping the rebels, therefore telling John what he thinks he wants to hear. DeSanta is in fact raising his suspicions about John. In John's brief time with DeSanta thus far, the Mexican army captain has displayed short-sighted, hot-headed, paranoid, 
and manipulative behavior. He almost immediately forms preconceived notions and impressions of those he meets and attempts to determine which side they may choose or serve. Even foreigners who have no involvement nor interest. De Santa is indeed a very devious and dangerous individual. DeSanta continues to lament and denigrate the citizens of the state by saying, We have a system of law in Mexico, senor, and we do not tolerate people who think they can run with their own. No one hides from Colonel Allende for long. This rebellion, it is a disease, and it is killing this country. John responds by asking, don't people have the right to stand up for themselves? To which DeSanta is immediately frustrated and objects to, demanding, the right? Don't you throw silly ideas at me? What do you know about the rights of the Mexican people? John responds that there must be a reason to this rebellion. And DeSanta responds by insulting the citizens, calling them stupid peasants who are spreading lies and then compares them to cattle, in that it takes few men to herd cattle. DeSanta's contempt for the people is quite telling. He is cold and ruthless to the bone, possessing no compassion or notion of individual rights, nor the rule of law, the genuine rule of law, but rather sheer authoritarian rule and oppression. But John makes things even worse by insisting there's a justification to the rebellion and that if he's asked questions, he will answer. To which DeSanta asks John if he is a revolutionary himself. And John says he was in a certain kind of way. While we understand John was an outlaw in the Vanderlyn gang, this is all DeSanta requires to confirm his suspicions. DeSanta continues to air his grievances with the state rebellion, claiming that the revolution is somehow selfish and that it's due to selfish individuals like Abraham Reyes, who comes from a privileged and rich family and is consumed with greed and ego who are putting their needs before the people. DeSanta believes that the citizens have no idea what real change is and that it is the citizens' own fault for being poor. John continues to question DeSanta, to which DeSanta eventually calls John a tired old revolutionary and naive. After this prolonged back and forth exchange, DeSanta finally reveals the plan to John. The rebels believe a train departing Chupa Rosa for Casa Madrugada is carrying supplies which they wish to raid, but the train does not have any supplies and it is in fact being escorted by soldiers. John and DeSanta finally arrive at Chupa Rosa, and both men ride to the train station and begin their escort as the train departs. Along the way to Casa Madrugada, waves of rebels attack the train on horseback, but are repelled by John, DeSanta, and the soldiers. They finally arrive at Casa Madrugada, successfully fighting off the rebels, but there was no sign of Abraham Reyes. DeSanta and the Mexican soldiers celebrate their successful escort of the train which wasn't carrying any supplies, and therefore lured the rebels into a trap, but not Abraham Reyes. However, the rebels proved to be persistent, ambush the few soldiers guarding the train, and then steal it. The news quickly reaches DeSanta, who tells John to stop the train before it reaches the bridge, and after a considerable pursuit, John is eventually successful and avoids inevitable disaster. In the following mission, The Demon Drink, 
John arrives at the governor's mansion in Escalera to find Colonel Allende berating De Santa, calling him a queer who makes him sick, in that De Santa speaks of loyalty but is transparent and suspects that De Santa wants him dead. Allende notices John and De Santa informs him that he is the American who helped with the train and defeated the rebels. Allende is initially hostile to John, claiming that the United States likes to make trouble in Mexico, and perhaps Allende should have John tied to a horse and dragged around town, or made to fight dogs. John insists he's only there to apprehend two outlaws and has no interest in Nuevo Paraiso's political affairs. John asks Allende if he knows anything about the two men he's pursuing, but Allende only knows a little bit about Javier, that he was born in Nuevo Paraiso and that his father was a drunken laborer. From there, Allende tries to justify his brutal reign while denigrating the citizens, calling them monkeys. Allende then tells John that if he does a favor for him, Allende will find the two men he's seeking. John immediately responds that after they find the two outlaws, he will help Allende in any way he can. But Allende snaps that John isn't in a position to negotiate. Allende tells John that there are rebels fighting soldiers at Tesoro Azul, a small abandoned settlement, and that the soldiers need his support. John and DeSanta then ride off for Tesoro Azul, and once more along the way, John's observations and questions are met by a very defensive DeSanta who makes excuses for Allende's authoritarian rule, his poor treatment of himself and other officers, and his need for teenage girls and young women. It's noteworthy that De Santa defends Allende in front of John, despite not only Allende's poor treatment and abuse of him, but also because De Santa is a sociopath and sycophant who is only interested in pleasing Allende. De Santa is never particularly honest with John. He always lies and attempts to manipulate, and this is a big red flag. When John and De Santa arrive at Tesoro Azul, they are met by Captain Espinoza, who almost immediately takes a proverbial shot at De Santa by telling John that he hopes John fights better than this little girl. John, DeSanta, Captain Espinoza and the soldiers take out the rebels and after the shooting ends, Espinoza has the soldiers round up the surviving females for Colonel Allende to John's disgust. John is further repulsed when Espinoza has John burn down some of the homes, which John eventually and begrudgingly does. Once John has set the homes ablaze, a random soldier asks John, isn't it beautiful? To which John calls him pathetic, and the soldier tells John to relax and that he should return to the villa to sample some of the girls before they spoil. John is clearly and visibly disgusted with what he's had to do thus far, and those he's been assisting are certainly taking note of his words and deeds. In the following mission, Empty Promises, John arrives once more at the governor's mansion in Escalera, where he's met by DeSanta. DeSanta tells John that he must immediately ride with him and the other soldiers departing on horseback because they've been betrayed and that the rebels have taken control of an old fort at a location called Torquemada. 
Colonel Allende wants all of the rebels killed, but the Santa laments the fact that Captain Espinoza is already at Torquemada, but fears he may do something stupid. As John and DeSanta are getting closer to the destination, they are suddenly ambushed by the rebels but fight them off, and eventually arrive at a temporary camp established by Captain Espinoza and the soldiers under his command. DeSanta calls Espinoza an angry dog and angry ape who the Mexican army lets out to run around sometimes, but maintains that he is in charge and not Espinoza. Espinoza responds to DeSanta's insults by calling him an office boy and instructs John to help by sniping the rebels high above on the cliffs with a rolling block rifle. John snipes the rebels high above and they make their way up towards the old fortress at Torquemada taking out various rebels along the way. Upon defeating the rebels and recapturing the old fort, Captain Espinoza personally and brutally executes the remaining survivors. DeSanta, meanwhile, greets John in a celebratory and almost contrived manner, telling John that a killer like him deserves fine wine and women, to which John ignores and inquires about information pertaining to Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela as DeSanta told John when he met him earlier in Escalera to ride with them. Then they'll find the outlaws that John seeks. Nonetheless, DeSanta continues to blow off John by telling him all in good time and that they will talk when they've returned to Escalera. John is persistent and even pokes DeSanta in the chest, repeating to him that he needs answers, to which DeSanta further disregards John by telling him to get drunk, and a woman, and to enjoy life. The next mission is Mexican Caesar, which begins with DeSanta and the young waiter he flirts with, Kike Montemayor, forcing two young girls into Colonel Allende's mansion, calling them whores and telling them to be patriotic, or perhaps they won't see certain family members again. John approaches and is immediately disgusted, but Colonel Allende suddenly appears. John asks about Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela, and Allende says that they have been riding with Abraham Reyes, the leader of the local rebellion. But then DeSanta suddenly interjects and tells John that Allende would like to hire John to escort another train from Chuparosa to an army base camp at Butter Bridge, and Allende will pay John 20,000 pesos and provide the location of Javier Escuela. John agrees and departs with Captain Espinoza, while DeSanta stays behind at the governor's mansion. John and Captain Espinoza depart for Chuparosa, and along the way, Espinoza doesn't appreciate John's sarcasm pertaining to noble patriotism, but elaborates on the mission, explaining that they're delivering supplies to an army camp in Diaz Coronas, in which the army is close to regaining control of the region. Espinoza also speaks poorly of DeSanta, who he doesn't really consider to be a soldier, and thinks he's better at being a pencil pusher licking Allende's boots, or flirting with bartenders and playing with his waiter friend. Espinoza then comments while the battle at Torquemada was hard, the shootout at Tesoro Azul was fun, and John immediately objects, asking if burning homes and killing innocent people was fun. Espinoza justifies the state government's crimes against humanity by arguing that if women and children pick up guns, they become soldiers, and that is, according to his twisted logic, a rule of war. Suddenly John and Espinoza are ambushed by rebels, but John quickly takes them out. Shortly after the rebels' failed ambush, Espinoza realizes that something is off and that they have been provided very few soldiers to complete the escort. Espinoza then observes that DeSanta praised his efforts at Torquemada to Colonel Allende, calling Espinoza a hero and requesting that he be assigned this mission. Espinoza starts wondering if they should turn around or wait for reinforcements. Espinoza's judgment and suspicions are sound, whereas John is still completely aloof 
and is skeptical of Espinoza's suspicions and mocks him based on his bravado and brutal nature. While John is correct in his assessment of Espinoza as a horrible human being, John is very naive and almost clueless regarding DeSantis and the Mexican army's suspicions of and growing contempt for him. Espinoza finally spells it out for John, who literally tells John that the army is suspicious of John because most American vigilantes that come to Mexico end up helping the rebels and that it's strange John is helping the army. Meanwhile, Espinoza explains, Abraham Reyes has been trying to recruit Americans to help the rebels, offering gold and women. John counters this by pointing out that he's done everything he's been asked and that if he's not provided the two outlaws he's seeking after this escort, he will ask the rebels for their help. And this was John's big mistake, as Espinoza immediately asks if that was a threat and warns John that he's only alive because of Espinoza. And this was all the justification that De Santa, Allende, and the Mexican army needed. John and Captain Espinoza finally arrive at Chuparosa and board the train. John also notices how few soldiers they have been provided, with Espinoza observing that they are new recruits as well. The two men begin their escort on board the train, and regardless of their circumstances, John is able to fight off the countless waves of rebel attacks. Finally, John and Espinoza make it to the army base camp at Butter Bridge with the crucial supplies for the Mexican army. In the following mission, cowards die many times. John arrives once more at Colonel Allende's mansion where he's greeted by an upbeat de Santa who claims that there is good news and that Allende would like to speak to John himself. Colonel Allende is briefly preoccupied, harassing one of the young women who the army kidnapped for him, commenting that he will either save her for later or kill her and all of her family. Allende quickly notices John and claims that John is both rare and a friend of Mexico. Allende then changes the subject and tells John that his men have captured and detained both Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela in Chuparosa and that John can ride there with DeSanta to take them into his custody. John and DeSanta then depart for Chuparosa. While traveling to Chuparosa, John calls out DeSanta for not paying the 20,000 pesos and setting himself and Espinosa up to die. And DeSanta tells John that Bill and Javier are cornered in the settlement's church as it is surrounded by soldiers. DeSanta asks John why he's after these two outlaws, but John answers sarcastically, and DeSanta responds with a very telling line. He says, You know, if you were less secretive, people might be more inclined to trust you. John is indeed very secretive to his own detriment, and DeSanta is correct in that respect. However, DeSanta isn't inclined to trust John because of a minor personal flaw, but rather because DeSanta never trusted John in the first place. John then counters DeSanta by asking him if he's married or if he enjoys raping girls like the Colonel. DeSanta then bluntly admits his sexuality to John, saying, No, I could never touch a woman like that. It is not my way. And then DeSanta tries to speak for the teenage girls and young women he's kidnapped and made victims of the Colonel by claiming the victims believe it is an honor to be sexually assaulted. John then admits to DeSanta that he has to find Bill and Javier because his family was taken from him. DeSanta then elaborates on his sexuality, explaining that he was traumatized by his mother, being both a powerful and destructive force in his life. 
so he finds it best to avoid the opposite sex, and that too many strong men become weak by having sex with women. John and DeSanta arrive at Chupa Rosa and make their way over to the church where Bill and Javier are apparently cornered and DeSanta tells John that the two outlaws are not armed and that they are prisoners of the army. When John enters the church, DeSanta mockingly thanks John for his service to Mexico and laughs. Then a soldier hits John in the back with his rifle butt. DeSanta says to John that he's betrayed Mexico enough and that he hopes he has a clear conscience because he's about to meet God. Just then, Abraham Reyes shoots and kills John's would-be executioner from a nearby balcony and shouts to John that he can cut the ropes off his hands. John takes his cue and runs under the cover of the rebel ambush. John makes it to Reyes who cuts him free recovers his stolen weapons, and helps the rebels take out the soldiers. He then storms Chuparosa's town hall and eliminates Captain Espinoza. Reyes provides a speech as his men celebrate the successful ambush as John was saved, Captain Espinoza and his soldiers defeated, but DeSanta seemingly escaped. In the mission Captain DeSanta's downfall, DeSanta's reign of terror finally comes to an end. John arrives at Luisa Fortuna's temporary campsite near the ruins of her family home at Camp Morada. Luisa tells John that Captain DeSanta and his troops are massacring rebels in the cemetery at Sepulcro and that they must all be stopped. John then rides out with several rebels as Luisa stays behind. John and the rebels arrive at Sepulcro, and John instructs the rebels to follow his lead and to take out all of the soldiers, but not to kill DeSanta, as John re requires information from him. But as John and the rebels arrive, it is revealed that DeSanta is making the rebels dig their own graves before brutally executing the rebels himself by shooting them in the head. John and the rebels attack and put an end to the massacre, taking out all of the soldiers while DeSanta flees on foot. John, however, catches up quickly on horseback, lassos and hogties DeSanta, stows him on the back of his horse, and rides back to Sepulcro. Back at Sepulcro, John exacts arguably some of the most satisfying retribution in the Red Dead Redemption franchise by personally beating the living crap out of DeSanta asking him about the whereabouts of Javier Escuela. DeSanta finally relents and says that Javier is holed up at Casa Madrugada. John spits on DeSanta, walks off and says to the rebels, he's all yours fellas, I got what I need. After the rebels kill DeSanta by shooting him several times, the rebel Victor remarks to John, that man is responsible for hundreds of innocent deaths, maybe even thousands. He will burn in hell. John and Victor then ride to Casa Madrugada, and John remarks that it looks deserted, and asks Victor if it's always this quiet. Suddenly, several soldiers emerge from the building on the first and second floors and attack John, but John is able to kill them all. Following the failed ambush, a prostitute emerges and John asks her about Javier Escuela. She tells John that Javier hasn't been seen around Casa Madrugada for months. So even when he was taking his last few breaths, DeSanta still couldn't tell John the truth and had to lie one last time in an attempt to lead him to one last failed ambush. Aggressive from the very beginning when he first met John, DeSanta lied to and manipulated John the entire time. DeSanta quickly became suspicious of John, even before completing their first mission together, and was deceitful and repulsive the entire time. 
Despite the fact that DeSanta was joking, he displayed all of the volatility, hostility, aggressiveness, and quickly agitated states that would consistently resurface in their time together. DeSanta is clearly a sociopath, or rather has antisocial personality disorder. The American Psychiatric Association states on their website that people with antisocial personality disorder may repeatedly disregard or violate the rights of others, may lie, deceive, or manipulate others, act impulsively, or disregard their or others' safety. They may have problems with drug or alcohol use, may violate the law, and typically show no remorse or guilt. The majority of this description can easily be applied to or describe Captain Vicente de Santa. De Santa demonstrated so many of these traits throughout John's time in Mexico. De Santa certainly broke the law and violated the rights of countless teenage girls and young women by kidnapping them and forcing them against their will to essentially become personal slaves of Colonel Allende, who were abused and sexually assaulted. DeSanta committed countless crimes against humanity, including the assault, murder, and even mass killings of rebels and civilians. Plus, as previously mentioned, kidnapping teenage girls and young women. DeSanta absolutely had no remorse for the crimes he committed, nor the victims he terrorized, abused, and murdered. DeSanta was incredibly deceitful and manipulative, constantly lying to John and stringing him along with promises of finding Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela, when in fact, the Mexican army were protecting Javier and Bill the entire time. DeSanta would quickly become irritable and agitated. His hostility and aggressiveness would often be revealed to John. DeSanta maintained superficial relationships and wasn't particularly close with anyone. Not once did we see him show genuine kindness, respect, or consideration to any of his colleagues, comrades, or citizens of the state. DeSanta disregarded the safety of others, especially his fellow Mexican soldiers and officers, and even tried to have Captain Espinoza killed. He was very opportunistic and craved power, with even Colonel Allende voicing his suspicion that DeSanta was scheming behind his back to have him killed. Finally, DeSanta is definitely a sociopathic liar, as opposed to a pathological liar. Pacific Beach Health, an outpatient behavioral health therapy facility in San Diego, California, provides a clear definition and explanations for sociopathic liars, and this seems to describe DeSanta extremely well. Sociopathic lying is a form of deceit that goes beyond simple lies. These individuals lie with a clear motive to manipulate, control, or directly harm others for their own benefit. Unlike pathological liars, whose lies may stem from a compulsion, sociopaths use lies as tools in a calculated strategy. And there can be no doubt that DeSanta utilized a calculated strategy of lying to John in order to string him along in the belief that he would eventually apprehend Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela, all the while he was being used by DeSanta and the Mexican army in their war against the state rebellion. DeSanta possessed a deeply held misogyny and literal hatred of women. He was so cruel and remorseless that he believed that the young girls he kidnapped 
and provided to Colonel Allende, felt it was an honor to be sexually assaulted. While this misogyny appeared to be common throughout the Mexican army, with Colonel Allende, Captain Espinoza, plus other officers and soldiers, demonstrating some of the most repulsive and sickening behavior imaginable, this was certainly much more deep-rooted with DeSanta. The detrimental impact of his mother's upbringing was profound on his overall psyche, which resulted in his sadistic behavior. DeSanta was clearly traumatized by his mother's upbringing, and he described his mother to John as being both a powerful and destructive force in his life. It was this upbringing that shaped DeSanta's extreme misogyny. So much so, he found it best to avoid the opposite sex altogether. DeSanta believed that too many strong men became weak by having sex with women. All this by no means excuses DeSanta's horrifying behavior and crimes against humanity. It certainly helps to provide an explanation for him.